with this religion. Now they're using these black flags because there's hadith about the black flags coming from Afghanistan at the, towards the end of time. But they don't know that there's actually two different black flags. There's the black flags of Bani Abbas, but then there's another group of black flags that we were warned against. Sayyidina Ali says, An Ali ibn Abi Talib, Qali idha ra'aytum al rayat al sud, falzimu al ard wa la tuharriku aydiyakum wa arjurukum. Stay put. Why? Because it's fitna. Stay put. What do you do during fitna? You do what the Prophet ﷺ said. When the fitna comes, you stay in your house. Kunu hilsan min ahlas al bayt. You don't go out. The Prophet ﷺ said, Al ibadatu fil fitnati kal hijrati ilayya. That doing ibadah during fitna is like making hijrah to me. Because his religion is not a religion of fitna. And civil strife, persecution, these Yazidis have been living there for centuries. The Christians, this is a testimony to the beauty of our religion that the Christian church of Syria and Iraq for centuries lived with their churches inviolable. They could worship God in their churches and they, didn't, they weren't afraid of the Muslims. And now they're running, they're fleeing. Sayyidina Ali said, Then you will see these weak, insignificant people. Insignificant people. Insignificant people. These are not notables. They have no learning. There's no scholars amongst them. Insignificant people. Their hearts are like pieces of iron. And in a riwayah, they have no mercy with their enemies. And the Prophet said, Man la yarham, la yurham. Even this poor mother asking for her child to be. And let me say something, just predicate this here. I'm not exonerating these neoconservatives that opened this door. All right, I'm not exonerating what this country did to the Iraqi people. All right, who opened the door of fitna? I'm not exonerating them, so I'm, I'm not talking, but I'm dealing with what we've got right now. That happened. Now we have another situation. We can play the blame game because that's Iblis's favorite game. That is his favorite game. Bima ghwaytani la ghuyannuhum ajma'in. That's Iblis. Our, our, our religion is Adam alayhi salam. He, he said, anfusina. He didn't say, Iblis made me do it. Right? Because, he, 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 he said, I'm giving you sincere advice. They believed him. They, they were like children. They were innocent. They believed Iblis. And they felt. He didn't say, oh, Iblis, he swore an oath. We never thought he'd lie. They didn't blame Iblis. That's why he's Khalifa. That's why Adam is Khalifa, because he didn't do what Iblis did. Iblis blames God. You led me astray. So you can blame America, you can blame Israel, but if you, if you want to get to the metaphysical level, then we have to deal with our sins. How, why did they come? We sent them our servants. Those were the Babylonians. They weren't the people of Haq. They were sent to Bani Israel. Why? Because Bani Israel had deviated from the path, and so God sent them servants that would go into their houses, take their women, kill their men. Why? Because Ummati Ummatu Marhuma Ju'ila Adabuha fi Dunyaha. My Ummah is a is a, is is an Ummah that has Rahma because all of their punishment is here in this world. Then what did he say? Fitanun was Zalaziru wal Balaya. You look at the Earthquakes in the Muslim world, when we have earthquakes, 10,000 people die. They have an earthquake here, three people die. This, this is what Allah said, that, that we're going to, the Prophet ﷺ said, we will have fitan. When we deviate, let them be warned. If you go against the, mess, the messenger, if you would go against his guidance, the Prophet said that, that when they gave bay'ah to him, Allah tu nazi al ahla amrah that you don't go against the Sultan. The Prophet ﷺ said that. People now, they say, oh, those hadiths, they're just put there by people that wanted to calm people down. And so, at Bukhari, none of these hadiths are sound. None of the things the ulama said for centuries. Now, of course, in this enlightened age, we're going to reinterpret the whole religion. 
this revolutionary age where we get rid of all these evil doers and the pure, uh, the pure ummah is going to come? What is this? What's happened? This is, this is a state. But see, they have hearts like iron. Humas habadola. That's what he said. Humas habadola. They're the people of Dola. That's their name, Dola. They call them Daesh in the Arab world. <laughs> Dola to Islamia, right? They're the people of Dola. That wasn't even a word the Arabs used other than just to revolve something. They didn't use it for state at that time. They will not have any covenant. You can't trust them with anything that they say. They call to the truth, but they're not from the people of the truth. Why? Because in the hadith, the Prophet ﷺ, when Hudayfa, people were asking about evil, Sahih al-Bukhari, Hudayfa ibn al-Yaman, the people were asking about good, he wanted to ask about sharr, out of fear that he might see it. He said, Ya Rasulullah, kunna fi jahiliyatin wa sharr, fajana Allahu bihada khair. We were in jahiliya and sharr, and then God brought this, this good to us. Is there any bad after this good? He said, Naam. And then he said, Is there any good after that bad? He said, Naam, wufihi dakhan. Yes, but it, it's going to be cloudy. It won't have the same purity. And he said, Ma dakhanuhu ya Rasulullah. What, what's the cloudiness? He said, Qawmun yahduna bi ghayri haddi. Ta'rifu minhum tunkiru. People will guide with other than my guidance. You will know some things and you'll reject other things. And then he said, Is there evil after that good? He said, Naam. Those who, their callers on the doors of the hell, if you answer them, if you respond to their call, you will be flung into the hell. Hudayfa said, Sufhum lana ya Rasulullah. Describe them for us so we'll know them. Hum min jildatina. They're Arabs. They're like us. Min jildatina. They look like us. Yatakallamuna bi alsinatina. They'll, they'll quote the Qur'an, they'll quote the Hadith. This, this is how the Prophet ﷺ described him, them. And then he said, ya Rasulullah? What do you command me to do at that time? He said, Ilzam jama'atul muslimin wa imamahum. Be with the jama'ah and the imam. Wa in lam yakun lahum jama'atun wa la imam. What if there's no jama'ah and no imam? Fa'atazal tilka al-firaqa kullaha. He said, avoid all those sects. Even if you have to cling to the root of a tree with your teeth until death comes to you. And you're on that. He didn't say, oh, He didn't say you have to establish the khilafah. But these people, they don't study. They, they're khawarij. And, and, and this media here is calling them Sunnis because they're killing Shia. They're not Sunnis. These aren't Sunnis. They're not Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah. These are Ahl Iblis. Fariqan Hada wa Fariqan Haqqa alayhim al Dalala. One group was guided and another group Haqqa alayhim al Dalala. Thabata alayhim al Dalala. In the hadith, then he says, Asma'uhum al Kuna. This is how you know them. And if you don't think these are accurate descriptions, Hudayfa said the Prophet got up in a khutbah and he spoke the whole day. He said every single fitna that would happen until the end of time. He described the leaders. He told us their names. He told us what would happen. And he said some of us could remember and others couldn't. Every single fitna. So don't think these things weren't mentioned. Asma'ahum al-Kuna. Their names are Abu so-and-so and Abu so-and-so. They don't go by their real names. Asma'ahum al-Kuna. When ispatuhum al-Qura. And, they, and they, they go back to towns, places. They don't go to tribes. Because the Arabs, they go by tribe. These people know. They go by places. Al-Baghdadi. Al-Ambari. Al-Juwaishi. All these, all these names of their towns that they're from. Al-Libi. Al-Musri. Al-Maghribi. They go back to places. This is what the Prophet ﷺ because it has hukum al rafa and people can say it's a weak senate. It sounds pretty sound to me. They have long hair. 
wearing it like women. Look at all the pictures of these guys with their long hair. Because <laughs> it's not that the Prophet ﷺ didn't have long hair, but it's no longer fashionable in the Arab world. Arabs don't wear their hair long, so that's a sign that you know them. Their hair is long. They'll start fighting amongst each other. <laughs> That's the nature. There's another troubling hadith that the Prophet ﷺ said, سَتَكُونُ فِتْنَةٌ فِي الشَّامِ لَعِبُ subyan. It begins with children playing in dar'a. And then he said that it'll just be after that one fitna after another. Kuluma sakana fitnatun hajat fitnatun ukhra. Every time it calms down in one place, it starts up somewhere else. In this, Ida Kharajat Raya Tasud, if you see the black flags, fa inna awalaha fitna, it begins with a fitna. Wa wasataha balala. And 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 the midst of it is delusion, misguidance, error. And it ends with atheism. Because that's what's going to happen. People, people start losing their faith. This is what happened to the Europeans. They had World War I and II. It was enough for them. They don't believe in God anymore. They were a profoundly religious civilization. Look at all the churches they built. People, get, people can't take it. That's so much. Where is God? The question is not where is God. It's where are we? That's the question. He's not asked about what he did. But we're going to be asked about what we did. Why aren't we following the guidance of the Prophet ﷺ? And in this hadith that Makhul relates, he says, Mali wali bani al Abbas, because they most of these they thought had to do with the Abbasids. But then he said, Shayya'u ummati, they split my ummah. Wa albasuhum thiyab al sawad. And they put black clothes on them. Albasuhum thiyab al nar. May God put clothes of fire on them. These people are khawarij. They're killing Muslims. They, 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 every single criteria. And don't be fooled by their piety. Don't be fooled by their piety. Because the Prophet ﷺ said, When you see them pray, you'll consider your prayer uh, insignificant. But he said, They'll recite the Quran. It won't go past their throats. The ulama said it means they won't understand it. They don't, because they don't have the tools. You can't understand the Qur'an without the tools. They won't understand it. And then he said, يَمْرُقُونَ مِنَ الدِّينَ Sahir Bukhari يَمْرُقُونَ مِنَ الدِّينَ كَمَا يَمْرُقُ السَّحْمُ مِنَ الرَّمِيَ They will leave this religion like an arrow is shot out of a bow. And, and in a riwayah in Al-Bukhari, it says, يَخْرُجُوا fi ummati." And then the Rawi says, Ma qala minha. There will come out amongst my ummah. And he didn't say from it, because they're not from him. These people are not from the Prophet. ﷺ. They have nothing to do with the man who was sent as a mercy for all the world. And the fact that they're in any way, shape, or form associated with this religion is a grave tragedy. Muslims in this country have a big responsibility to get out there and educate people, because these people are watching these newscasts. And maybe there is some other agencies involved. I don't know. Because this, this age of fitin, it's all confusion. It's what the Prophet ﷺ said. But as far as I'm concerned, I'm not confused. I'm not confused. If you're confused, you haven't studied this religion. And if you think this has anything to do with the truth, you definitely haven't studied this religion. Because these people are shayateen. 